The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up. When it goes quiet, something's not right. A toddler falls into a family pool. Just ran around looking for her. And is underwater for 10 minutes. I'm just like, this can't be happening. This can't be happening. The desperate fight to save her life. I've seen children that have been underwater for less than that and have not made it. How did this girl survive? This is what the church is called to do. On today's 700 Club. Of the 700 Club, a huge triumph for President Trump. He's crushed it with the appointment of his 150th federal judge. What does this historic milestone mean, and how will it have lasting impact on our nation long after the president leaves office? CBN's White House correspondent Ben Kennedy gives us the explanation. President Trump called this a historic milestone. Just about one in four appeals judges is now a Trump appointee. Truly momentous achievement. President Trump extolling the judicial mindset of his federal appellate court picks. They will uphold our Constitution as written. These distinguished men and women are some of the most gifted scholars, respected jurists, and finest legal minds ever placed on the federal bench. Of the 179 positions on the circuit court, 43 are occupied by the president's nominees. Four seats are currently open, with five more expected to become vacant due soon. In comparison, President Obama nominated 55 circuit judges during his entire eight years in office. Percentage-wise, you'll never beat one man. We know who that is, right? George Washington, 100 <laughs> percent. But in terms of, I'd like to say quality and quantity, uh, we are going to be, I think, just about number one by the time we finish. And Carrie, what are some of the big issues facing this country? These judges could have a direct hand in. Oh, gosh. I mean, it's every issue that comes before the courts. Right now, the Supreme Court already is dealing with a lot of cases having to do with abortion, having to do with religious freedom, um, having to do with immigration and the limits on government. But confirming these nominees hasn't always been easy. Democrats and liberal groups ramping up their opposition against conservatives like Amy Coney Barrett, who was criticized for her Catholic faith. The dogma lives loudly within you. And most recently, Lawrence Van Dyke, who is accused by the ABA of bias against LGBTQ people. I did not say that. I do not believe that. It is a fundamental belief of mine that all people are created in the image of God. He's done work for groups like Alliance Defending Freedom, and, and they, they, that flags him as, oh, you must be someone who's going to now be unfair, for example, to LGBT uh, litigants before him, which he said, uh, they unfairly said he, he that he wouldn't uh, say he would be fair to all, all litigants. And he said, that's not true. Severino was in the East Room during what she calls an exciting milestone for the president, pointing out that it's not just the Supreme Court that makes historic rulings. People don't realize realize more than 99% of cases end at the appellate courts. They don't ever get to the Supreme Court. Trump placed two of the nine seats on the U.S. Supreme Court, a move Republican lawmakers say will define his time in office. The defining moment of your presidency for me was the Kavanaugh hearing. This room would be empty if we had failed Brett Kavanaugh. Now, President Trump said, look, it is not over. Within the next two months, he expects to have 182 federal judges to have been approved. Ben Kennedy, CBN News, the White House. Fantastic. We've been seeing the courts, and I dare say that uh, there's going to be at least one opening on the Supreme Court before the president leaves office, maybe two. Uh, I understand Sotomayor has got health issues, and uh, of course the reigning queen of the court uh, seems to be, uh, you know, like immortal. She, but nevertheless, she's had a number of, of health issues that may uh, leave for a vacancy. So he might have as many as two before he leaves office. Well, another news, more impeachment mayhem. The Democrats are tiding three witnesses to make their case against the president. Here's Ephraim Graham with that story and more from our CBN newsroom. 
Pat, the impeachment inquiry goes public next week. It begins as President Trump beefs up his communications team and the vice president's office knocks down a shocking allegation. CBN's Jenna Browder is following the story for us in Washington. The public hearings kick off Wednesday, and while all three witnesses have already talked to investigators, this will be the first time the American public gets to hear from them firsthand. Bill Taylor, the acting U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, will be the first to testify. He told investigators President Trump withheld millions of dollars in military aid to Ukraine. Taylor's transcript reveals he sent a cable to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, but received no response. Most important facts are largely not contested. President Trump last night in Monroe, Louisiana, shot back. Democrats must be accountable for their hoaxes and for their crimes. Really, I mean, do you believe? What's going on in Washington with these do-nothing, somewhat evil, and in some cases, very evil people. Also testifying next week, former Ukrainian Ambassador Marie Ivanovich and George Kent, a top State Department official. The president's defenders say none of this rises to the level of impeachment. There are perfectly appropriate quid pro quos, and there are inappropriate quid pro quos. This all comes as a new book written by an anonymous White House aide is set to come out. The Huffington Post reports the book claims White House officials made a list of cabinet secretaries who would support using the 25th Amendment to remove the president in the days after he fired FBI Director James Comey and that the officials believed Vice President Pence would back it up. The VP's office refuted the claim, calling it fake news. And the White House is dismissing the hearings, while at the same time beefing up its defense. It's brought on two longtime Trump allies to help with strategy. In Washington, Jenna Browder, CBN News. Most say impeachment is not likely. Pat? Well, I agree. They're not going to impeach. The, the uh, Democrats in the House do not have the intestinal fortitude, we might say the guts, to go forward and actually go on record. So they're not going to do it. This is just a lot of smoke and mirrors. But the truth is, it is perfectly appropriate for a president to withhold a, a large amount of foreign aid till he ensures himself that there's no corruption in the country receiving the aid and that they won't just waste it. I think that's an appropriate thing. And they talk about, well, he withheld it. Well, the aid finally went forward. It wasn't that he, he kept it off forever. He just held it off until he could find out what was going on. There's nothing wrong about that. There's certainly no impeachable offense. But the, the Democrats are just playing this for all they're worth, and it's going to blow up in their face, and they don't dare. I mean, they do not dare to do anything. Now, President Trump's strongest supporter in the Congress when he was just a candidate was an Alabama senator named Jeff Sessions. Well, you know what happened to him when he recused himself and it left uh, Rod Rosenstein in charge, and then you have a special prosecutor, and then you have all that trouble. And that made the president mad, and, well, it should have. Well, former Attorney General Jeff Sessions is going to try again, and it looks like he will be successful in Alabama. Here's uh, Ephraim with that uh, news. Pat, as you said, former Attorney General, General Jeff Sessions is expected to announce today he is running for his old Senate seat in Alabama. He'll return to the political stage a year to the day he resigned as President Trump's first Attorney General. That resignation came at the president's request. Sessions had been one of the president's earliest supporters, but their relationship soured after he recused himself from special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. Sessions was a longtime senator. His entry upends an already crowded GOP primary race. YouTube pulled a video of a prominent doctor questioning modern medical views on transgender lifestyles, calling it hate speech. In 2017, the video, Dr. Michelle Critella, executive director of the American College of Pediatricians, discussed transgenderism as a mental health issue. They told us that it was actually uh, a form of hate speech because of a specific line that she said that if a person wants to chop off an arm or a leg, it would be considered a mental illness. If they want to chop off their genitals, that would be considered uh, transgenderism. 
That was the Heritage Foundation's Jarrett, Jarrett Stepman, who also says the YouTube would only reinstate the video if that line was removed, adding the video was supposed to spark debate over science behind transgenderism. He noted Facebook did put the video back after Heritage appealed. In Europe, a Christian politician is under investigation for hate speech. The reason? She posted a Bible passage on social media. CBN senior international correspondent Dale Hurd has the story now from Finland. Paivi Rasinen, a member of Finland's parliament, is under investigation for committing a hate crime after she posted a Bible verse on social media aimed at Finland's state church for its promotion of homosexuality. In my tweet, I directly cited Romans first chapter and verses 24 to 27 and posted a picture. A passage which condemns homosexual relations. She said her purpose was to wake up the church in Finland. And when praying, um, I got convinced that it is not my time now to jump out of the sinking boat as a parable of, of the church, but to try to wake up the sleeping ones in, in the church. Leif Namala, editor of a Christian newspaper and a TV host in Finland, told us he was very surprised to hear Rossinen was under investigation. It was unbelievable. It was a real surprise. And uh, the first thought was, are we really, are they really going this far? If convicted, Paivi could face a fine or even jail time. But it's the precedent from this case that could affect every believer in Finland. I'm afraid and I'm worried that this case, the criminal investigation, might frighten some Christians uh, to hide and to keep silent. Finland's attorney general has now opened a second investigation concerning a pamphlet that Paivi wrote 15 years ago about biblical Christian marriage called Man and Woman, He Created Them. A bishop in Finland state church tweeted that while he found this new charge against Rossinen worrying, he said, I regard the writings of Paivi Rossinen wrong, harmful, and contrary to Christian charity. Dale Hurd, CBN News, Helsinki. Posting scripture, criminal offense, hard to believe, Pat. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is not hate speech, but the Bible is very clear. Jesus spoke clearly. He, he talked about people being whitewashed walls. He said, you know, how can you escape the damnation of hell? He talked about hell. He talked about heaven. He talked about righteousness. He talked about God's standards. And we have clear statements by Jesus that he said, for this cause, a man shall leave his wife and cleave, uh, his mother and father and cleave to his wife, and the twain shall become one flesh. And what God has joined together, let not man put asunder. And there's no room in there for homosexuality. When you, when you get the Apostle Paul, he said, it's the last phase of human turning away from God. When women lose, leave the necessary uh, function and begin to burn in passion toward another, of the same gender, same with men. Now, for some reason, the Bible has now become hate speech, but that is God's standard. And if we reject that standard, God is going to judge us by those standards. And, you know, he brought down judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah. And the whole concept, what is called sodomy, is where they got that from. <clears throat> and God sent angels down and and warned the people, took Lot and his family out of Sodom, and then rained fire and brimstone and killed everybody in the area. So the, this is a pretty serious thing. And if we're not allowed to speak out boldly about these things, especially a doctor, a, a, a leader of pediatricians saying, look, you can't dismember yourself and, and, and say it's not a, a pathology. It really is. And uh, we cannot close our eyes to the truth, but there are people who want to shut off any speech that disagrees with their lifestyle. And Christians need to stand up about that in, in, in the strongest possible way to say, we believe the Bible, the Bible is the Word of God, and this is the standard whereby Christians should live. And if you don't like it, well, you go ahead and do your thing, but it's not hateful 
for us to say we believe this is the standard that God has set up for Christians in this world. Well, it's shocking, but it is not amazing that 40, 50 years ago, this lifestyle was condemned uh, as uh, abhorrent, and now it's reversed. So if you don't embrace this lifestyle, you are there a, a hate monger. It's just terrible to even contemplate. Well, well, and then the Koran can easily be read with any offense that's in it, and no one should say anything because that also is hate mongering. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, there's no yeah. Sense uh, well, to it. You, you can't speak ill against anybody even if they want to kill you. But anyhow, we've got to be free, ladies and gentlemen. That's what the First Amendment's all about: freedom of speech. And freedom of speech means if you don't like it, if it's, you don't like what's being said, well. I, I, I don't agree with the, the judge who said it because he was kind of an atheist, but he said the best truth, test of truth is in the marketplace. So let, 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 let the people talk. Well, uh, baby, it's cold outside. They, they, they want to ban that storm, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Can't control that yeah, much. <laughs> that, that's sexist. But anyhow, Ephraim has more on the winter. Pat, a winter storm is moving into the northeast today. It snowed yesterday in Wisconsin and Minnesota, causing accidents on the freeways. Well, now parts of that system will meet up with cold air coming down from Canada, bringing up to six inches of snow to the northeast tonight and tomorrow. After that, super low temperatures up and down the east coast. Weather Bell meteorologist Joe Bastardi tells CBN News it could set a record for this time of year. The fact of the matter is this, we do have major, major cold air on the weather charts for the month of November. November may turn out to be a top five cold November for the United States as a whole since uh, 50 years ago. That's how much cold air is coming. And brace yourself for more cold into the weekend. Pat. Well, I'm happy to tell you folks here in Tidewater, it's benign. It's the garden spot of the world. And it is supposed to get colder tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just be honest. Well, well, I'm trying to advertise our home. Okay. <laughs> and I'm killing it. <laughs> okay, what's next? Well, coming up, dead silence. That's what alerted this mother that her 16-month-old was missing. Where did she find her child? The heart-stopping answer just ahead. But first, it's a street where you might get shot. So why are 200 kids here for Sunday school? Find out after this. A living hell, that's what gangs, drugs, and violence make America's inner cities. And children suffer collateral damage. How do we reclaim those broken lives? Charlene Aaron brings us an encouraging answer. Each week, rain or shine, this open field turns into something called Sidewalk Sunday School, complete with music, drama, and Bible stories. And each week, some 200 kids from the housing projects behind me show up to learn about God. It's all part of an outreach called Dallas Metro. Clay Wallace started the ministry 26 years ago. The easiest way to reach people is to reach them in their neighborhood, on their turf. We have a one-hour program, one-hour fast-paced action program that communicates the gospel in a way they can understand. Children from broken families, danger zones, and some of the city's poorest communities attend the weekly gatherings. These kids all live in high-risk crime areas. Many of our kids have been abused. Uh, physically, emotionally, sexually. The crime rate over here is incredibly high. Windows broken out, uh, their doors kicked in. Live music and practical skits are just a few ways the ministry helps to bring peace. Wallace says while methods may change, the message remains the same. Our goal every week is we teach one verse to every child. They teach it to our kids and adults can understand about Jesus Christ. CBN News visited one of the 14 neighborhoods that hosts the Bible-based program each week. It's one of our original locations when we started doing Sidewalk Sunday School. The truck that's behind me, uh, the side actually opens up and it becomes a stage. There's a stage with legs. It's, it's about four feet off the ground and the kids sit on the ground on tarps, blue two blue tarps and a green tarp. 
Operations Director James Musiaki says, while kids are the main focus, there's a fringe benefit. We have parents that come out, and the cool thing is that not only do the parents come out, there's people that don't even have kids that come and just watch and they're part of the program because they are so drawn to the atmosphere that's here on this lot. Due to growing needs, a teen program, weekly food distribution, summer camp, and holiday giveaways have been added. You never dream that you have the opportunity to have impact on tens of thousands of kids' lives, and that's what's happened over the years. Timothy Thomas is just one life transformed by the ministry. Growing up, his parents belonged to a gang, a path he says he was sure to follow. I was a little hot-headed little, if you could describe a worse teenager, that was me. The one thing that I heard from them that really stuck was, Jesus is your friend, and that you should be a friend of God. Karina Thomas and her family often struggle to make ends meet. She says Dallas Metro was always there providing love and support. They were out there every single week knocking on our door. And to some families, you know, it can be kind of like, you know, they're back, you know, why are they always coming back? And they, they never gave up. Now college graduates and married, Timothy and Karina serve together as youth and children pastors at the ministry. I remember as a kid looking up at the teachers on the stage thinking, man, they have it all together. Like, they're so cool. They know Jesus. I wish I could be like them and I'm able to pour back out what Jesus poured into me. If it wasn't for Dallas Metro and if it wasn't for James and Pastor Clay just constantly being there, there's no telling where my life would end up. I would have followed what I called the neighborhood norm. Here's the neighborhood norm. You get out of high school, that's it. And if they weren't there, I probably would have did the same thing. That constant connection led to a better life than he ever dreamed, something Thomas can now share with the new generation. God has a purpose and a destiny for your life, and there's a way to get, the, uh, get there, and you have to have a relationship with him. Meanwhile, Wallace believes the last two decades of his ministry are just the foundation for the greater to come. We have a new generation of leaders that God is raising up in our city, and I really believe this next generation is going to do far better, far exceeding anything that we have done the last 32 years. Charlene Aaron, CBN News, Dallas. Thanks, Charlene. Isn't that marvelous? Dallas Metro, they're absolutely right. Why sit back and say, well, they won't come to my church? Why not take the church to them? It's a wonderful concept. And to see hundreds and hundreds of those young people singing and praising the Lord, it's really nice. Yeah, great testimony. Mm. Well, still ahead, a never-ending hamster wheel. That's how a network engineer described his life. Why could he barely keep his head above water? And how did he finally get off that wheel? But first, a toddler found floating in the family pool for 10 minutes. Doctors said she'd never make it. The question is, what did the Holy Spirit say? That's coming up. You know, a few years ago, I was trying to figure, how can we help people? You know, we, we, we're planning to sit down, my wife and I and some others and the family, to lavish Thanksgiving dinner. You'd have a turkey, you'd have uh, sweet potatoes and mashed potatoes, and you'd have pumpkin pie and all that stuff. And you say, well, we can't sit there and enjoy this. We think there are people out there in the streets that are starving. So how do we fix something? Well, I said, well, what I want to do is to add up all the money that, that we're going to spend on, on these holiday f meals and equal that amount and give to uh, Operation Blessing so that they could take it out. And then when they take it, uh, it used to be that we could get three and four times multiplication if we took the gifts and then got other churches to involve. And then, you know, they participated. We, we shared. And then they, so we multiply the money. <clears throat> now, I want to do the same thing. I've got something going out to you. It says, give thanks to the Lord. It's an envelope. It's very pretty. It's coming to you. And what we'd like to do is to say, would you just add up what you're going to spend on your Thanksgiving meal and write a check for that a month? Uh, if it's $50, $60, $70, 10 whatever you're going to spend. I mean, what would that turkey cost and all that. Other? And fill this out and send a check. This is a great time to help people. And this is the CBN Holiday Appeal. And it's Give Thanks. 
Uh, you are going to help life-saving hope and help to those who need it most. Uh, it's uh, CBN Center, Virginia Beach, 23463. Or you can call 1-800-700-7000 and say, I, I want to give something thankful. Terry, this is a good idea, isn't it? Your food will taste better if you do it. Yeah, oh, that <laughs> turkey will be so much better. You won't have heartburn or any of that stuff. <laughs> Guaranteed. All right. It's a good opportunity to bless <laughs> others. Well, we turn now to an amazing story. Ariella Lenny should not even be here. The 10 minutes she spent underwater as a toddler robbed her brain and other vital organs of oxygen. What shocked her seasoned ER nurse and what was the supernatural message her mother received? Nora Lenny vividly remembers the morning of August 19th, 2016. I noticed that it had gone quiet. When it goes quiet and you have a toddler in the house, something's not right. She was going through her morning routine while her husband Patrick was meeting with a handyman. Then, Nora realized her 16-month-old daughter, Ariella, was nowhere to be found. Just ran around Ariella. looking for her, calling her name, didn't hear her, didn't see her. Ariella had found an open door and wandered into the backyard alone. After 10 minutes of searching, Nora discovered her floating in the family's pool. I just grabbed her out of the pool, ran inside with her. She's limp, her lips are blue. She's just dangling in my arms. I'm just like, this can't be happening. This can't be happening. Out front, Patrick heard the screams and ran into the house. He found Nora performing CPR on Ariella and called 911. It was just desperation. Lord, heal my daughter. You know, she's dying. I was praying. I was definitely scared. And I, I guess in my mind, I was kind of praying, just saying, Lord Jesus, please let her be OK. Paramedics arrived and had to shock Ariella three times to get a steady pulse. They rushed her to Galasano Children's Hospital in Rochester, New York. She was under 10 minutes, so she was not getting any oxygen for 10 minutes. And your organs, your brain, your heart, they just don't make it. And I've seen children that have been underwater for less than that and have not made it. Veteran pediatric nurse Jill Hartland was on duty in the ER when Ariella arrived. She was not alert, she was not mentating, she wasn't tracking or looking around. Her pupils were fixed and dilated, which tells me that there's increased swelling like in the brain. I was actually told by the doctor, she's probably not going to live. And if she does live, that she won't be able to walk on her own. She won't be able to feed herself. You know, she's not going to be the child that you know her today. I looked at the doctor and I just told her, I'm sorry, cannot accept that. It was something that I felt within me that the Holy Spirit was saying to me, this is not the way it's going to end. Doctors put Ariella into a coma to slow the brain swelling and calm her seizures. The first 72 hours were critical to her survival. Meanwhile, Patrick started making calls. All across the country and even overseas, people were lifting Ariella up in prayer. We were getting these prophetic words from people. And yes, with every one that I received, I would read it out loud and read it to my wife and to anyone that was in the room. It did increase my faith. It kind of makes you feel like I'm not in this alone. And you feel the prayers and the love of brothers and sisters in Christ. And, you know, this is what the church is called to do. We're called to lift one another up in prayer in our time of need. Nurse Hartland noticed something different about Pat and Nora. Normally, parents are frantic, and it shows. There's no mindfulness or peacefulness. They're just very frantic and very scattered and uncontrollable emotions. But it's almost like they knew that she's in God's hands and there was a, that kind of peace that was surrounding them. Overnight and into the next day, people prayed, believing God's promise for a miracle, including Pat and Nora's home church. And Lord, we lift Ariella before you to declare and declare that the healing you purchased for her 2,000 years ago is now being manifest in her body. She shall live and not die and proclaim the word of the Lord. By that evening, Ariella's seizures had stopped and the brain swelling was going down. But doctors cautioned about her recovery. 
Most physicians would say that she's either going to be brain dead or on a ventilator, needing a, a feeding tube um, for the rest of her life. The prayers never stopped. And on the third day, Ariella opened her eyes. I was just like, I know my God is doing it. <laughs> He's doing it. I was just like, thank you, Jesus. There's no other explanation for it. In the evening of day three, the doctor was pretty bold and said that she believed that Ariella was going to be waking up as they took her off of the sedation uh, to be her normal self without any changes. And she did. Just four days after her accident, Ariella was released to go home. Nurse Hartland was coming into work as the family was leaving the hospital. I was flabbergasted, literally shocked that this little girl that had been in the unit just three or four days prior, poor prognosis, could make such a rapid turnaround in any capacity, but a turnaround that looked like this, where she was a completely normal 16-month-old. Um, it was God. <laughs> There's just no other way to... It was a miracle. Today, Ariella enjoys helping around the house. She's a normal, healthy little girl with no issues from the accident. Ariella would not be here without prayer. There's no way. I believe we just petitioned heaven so mightily that the Lord saw the grief. He saw our grief and our desperation, and he answered the prayer. But for me, it deepened my faith to say that, Lord, if you can do this, there's nothing too hard for you. Nothing too hard for you. God does still answer prayer. He still delivers people. As tragic as these things are, as, as difficult and as heavy as they are, God answers prayer. There is nothing too hard for him. That's the message that that story and that we want to convey to you today is we are about to join you in lifting your needs before the Lord. God knows you. He knows your name. He is able. And so be encouraged by the story of this little girl. And yeah. then we have some other stories yeah. as well, Pat. Oh, this is Vladimir who lives in Antelope, California. He and his wife could not pay their bills. They decided to turn on the 700 Club. They heard you pray, there's somebody. You haven't even paid your bills. You're crying out to God right now. You need a certain sum to pay bills. Is it $5,000? God is going to supply it. It's going to be a miracle. Just open your hand and receive it. Thank God for it. A miracle's going to happen. Well, that same day, Vladimir received an unexpected special project that allowed him to make $1,500 per day. He worked the project until he made the $5,000 he needed. I didn't Amen. Know Vladimir. I didn't know he needed $5,000, but God did. And he supplied the need. Now, folks, for 40 years, Reuben of Union City was limited in his daily activities. He had a painful cyst in his tailbone. He had surgery, the pain returned. And one day, Terry said, it's your lower back, the very bottom of your spine, it connects to your tailbone. It's so painful, God is healing you. And right now, in a creative way, and guess what? Reuben's cyst went away, and they were amazed that you, you didn't know Reuben. Or I didn't, but I remember that yeah, word. I remember yeah. speaking that and thinking, wow, that's a it's kind interesting. kind of weird, I mean, you yeah. know, but uh, the Lord knew, and he's healed. Now, folks, all things are possible with the God we serve. Now, I want to pray. Terry and I are going to pray together for you, and we're going to believe God. So let's join hands. Join with us. Father, thank you, Lord. we thank you in Jesus' name for all you're doing. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' holy name. Uh, we've had a thing about a ventilator. There's somebody has been on a ventilator, whether I don't know if it's polio or, or some kind of a lung problem, but right now God has healed your lungs and you will not need a ventilator anymore. In the name of Jesus, receive an answer. Terry. Now, there's somebody else. You have an issue with your abdomen. It's not one thing. It's actually several things, and there doesn't seem to be a way to balance it all, but there's a binding feeling that you have that's constantly with you, a pulling down and a just a discomfort, sometimes pain. God is releasing that from you right now. Just lift up your hands and begin to praise Him. Somebody, you feel like something's pinching your, your, your arms or something going on, and 
I, I think it's some kind of a demonic attack, and we're speaking the word in the name of Jesus. You shall be free in the name of the Lord. Terry? Yes, yeah, someone else, you have a, um, uh, I think this is demonic as well, like a darkness that's just fallen over you. You're very aware of it, like you know it's not your norm, but you can't seem to shake it. Right now, lift your hands and begin to audibly praise God and thank Him. You are being set free from that thing in thank Jesus' you, Lord. name. In Jesus' name, receive an answer. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Well, Terry, there's more coming. By the way, well, let us know what the Lord has done for you. We'd love to hear the answers. If you need further prayer, all you have to do is pick up the phone, call. Somebody's here will pray with you. They'll laugh with you. They'll share your burden with you. And we all pray together. We believe in answers to prayer. 1-800-700-7000. Mm -hmm. It's a toll-free number. You can call anytime you want to. Terry? Well, calling all YouTube lovers, your questions, honest answers is coming up. Carol wants to know, is it appropriate to give lottery scratch-off tickets as gifts for Christmas? Stay tuned. Pat will answer that. Plus, he owes the IRS thousands with student and car loans on top of that. You'll never guess how this man got a $20,000 bonus and a 12% raise. But you're about to find out after this. Welcome back to the 700 Club for this CBN News Break. Two former Twitter employees and a Saudi national are charged with spying for Saudi Arabia. The former employees allegedly used their access to gather information on Twitter users who were critical of the Islamic Kingdom with the goal of finding their locations. Authorities say the Saudis recruited the spies to stop growing criticism of their leadership on social media. One of the men allegedly obtained the data of more than 6,000 Twitter users. A new study shows more children are using e-cigarettes. A report from the Journal of the American Medical Association finds one in four high schoolers say they've used in the last month. Now that's a 30% increase from 2018. Meanwhile, one in 10 middle school age children say they've tried an e-cigarette in the past 30 days. Experts say flavored pods that appeal to children is one of the reasons for the prevalence, despite a growing number of illnesses related to e-cigarettes. Remember, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Terry are back with more today's 700 Club. It's coming up right after this. A never-ending hamster wheel. That's how Eric Baker described his life. The harder he worked, the more money he owed. Was there any way out? Take a look. Eric Baker is a successful network engineer who works with multinational banking and financial services firms. But a few years ago, he could barely keep his head above water. I had a bill from the IRS that was like maybe thirty-five, forty thousand dollars at one point. Um, there was student loans. There was a car loan. Altogether, Eric owed over a hundred thousand dollars and was doing all he could just to make minimum payments. Well, it's it's depressing, right? It, it makes you feel as if you're working just to survive. You know, you don't really have any real purpose. It's just to pay the bills and just to survive and just enough to get to the next check. You know, it's this never-ending hamster wheel that you're on. One day while channel surfing, Eric landed on the 700 Club. You know, they were talking about my situation. It, it was just, you know, my ear, my spiritual ear is perked up. Eric prayed with Gordon and received Christ as his savior. From that point on, his life took a new turn. I developed a hunger for God. I wanted to know more about him. So I started to just read the word. And, and this is something that I've never done before. I mean, I would read the Bible, but it was always like a chore. It was work, it felt like work. As Eric grew in his newfound faith, he continued to reach out to CBN for help. I called the number and someone prayed with me over the phone. And I just felt so encouraged. CBN was there for me when I needed help the most. 
I didn't have any other lifeline. I didn't have anyone else to talk to. And these people, three, four in the morning, these people were on the phone and they're talking to me and they're praying with me, they're encouraging me. You know, this, this is, um, where else are you gonna get something like that? The change in Eric was so noticeable, even his boss mentioned it during his next performance review. He says, Eric, you are an indispensable part of this team. He says, he says, you know, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. As Eric learned more about God, he started giving. He also became a CBN partner and soon increased his giving. He says it wasn't long before he started seeing results. When I started to tithe more, I saw more of his faithfulness. I got a, a almost $20,000 bonus. And this was like just a few weeks after I started tithing more. I got a raise. After receiving that 12% raise and bonus, Eric was able to get back on track financially. He began paying down his debts, and today he's almost completely debt-free. He still supports CBN and encourages others to give back to God. It's a gift. Tithing is a gift to us. It, it intensifies our faith in God, and you really get the opportunity to see Him in action. Taste the Lord and see that He's good. You know, you have to, you have to step out in faith. Beautiful. Taste the Lord. You know, we're not supposed to tempt God. That's the sin. But the, God, the Bible invites us to, quote, prove Him with your tithes and offerings. So you can prove God by giving. Uh, you, you don't tempt Him by jumping off buildings and stuff like that. That's the sin. But to prove him with your obedience will make a difference. What a great testimony. Listen, we've got something called the transforming word. They're Proverbs, verses of wisdom, favor, and anointing. And I'm reading these verses. It's a DVD here. And uh, you can use that and play it at home. And uh, uh, it'll, it'll bless you because this is the word of God. And let the word of God dwell richly in you. And uh, it, it'll it'll things will come alive. So Eric joined the 700 Club. God bless him. Mm -hmm. 65 cents a day, $20 a month. And you can be a 700 Club member. We want to send this gift to you, the transforming word. But uh, please call in. It's 1-800-700-7000. It's easy. What do you have? Well, this is David who lives in Henderson, Texas, Pat. He said the Transforming Word CD with verses from Proverbs was wonderful and uplifting, a great encouragement. Pat Robertson is a wise scholar of the Word of God. May God bless him. It's, you know, it really is true that when we listen to the Word of God and it's read by someone who understands the Word of yeah. God, there's a special anointing that's on it. Well, I, I think it is. And, uh, you know, I've just written my 21st book, I think it is. It says, uh, Successful Families and Finances in the Kingdom of God. It's going to be a, a premium for January. And they asked me to read. They want an audio book. People apparently like those things. Well, you can put them in your car when you're driving. I, I you can really so. make use of them. Well, I, I'm, I'm, tomorrow I go into the audio room and start reading. Hope my voice will hold up. But <laughs> anyhow, I'm going to be reading you know, that book, Successful Families and Finances in the Kingdom of God. Awesome. And I hope it will be a blessing for people. But anyhow, call right now and listen to what Eric said. He's, he, he, he don't have to be a, a hamster running around chasing your tail. Uh, you don't have to do that. Uh, God wants you to be free, and He wants you to be on top of your finances, not under. Uh, that, that's the thing. You know, some people say, well, I'm under a burden of debt. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get on top of it and make money work for you instead of you working for money. That's the big deal. Here, here. 1-800-700-7000. Please call. Terry. Well, up next, always informative, inspiring, and especially entertaining, our wildly popular email segment. Justin says, my wife wants our daughter and her boyfriend to live together in our house. I strongly disagree with this. Any advice? Can you guess what Pat has to say about that? I can. <laughs> we'll be back with his answer after this.
Time for your questions and some honest answers. Pat, this first one comes from Carol, who says, Hello, Pat. Do you think it's appropriate to give lottery scratch-off tickets as gifts for Christmas since they're associated with gambling? What are your thoughts? Uh, my thought would be that's a very, very bad idea. Do you want to hook somebody on gambling? You want to, look, that whole lottery thing is a scam. It really is. I mean, your chances of getting hit by an asteroid coming from <laughs> Mars is, is about as, as much as hitting on the lottery. You're not going to win anything. And it's, it's a, a scam that's set up to make money for the state. Okay. Well, I mean, why would you want to get anybody hooked on those things? If you want to give somebody some money, give them some money. I mean, don't give them a lottery ticket for that. That's terrible. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is Justin who says, my wife and I have strong differences regarding our 17-year-old daughter's relationship with her 22-year-old boyfriend. Our daughter is in college and has plans to move into an apartment with her boyfriend as soon as she turns 18. My wife would rather have the two of them move into a room together in our house so they can save money. I do not believe they should be living together and would see them living together in our house as our blessing in the arrangement and showing our other kids that we're okay with this. I can't justify them living together with us so they can save money. Any advice? Justin, you're absolutely right. I cannot imagine your wife wants your 17-year-old daughter to start shacking up with a boyfriend before they get married. I come off it. I mean, what kind of nutty thing is this? I, I, I wonder why people have forsaken the Bible. It's so, you know, look, if, if the two of them want to get married, it's a little young, but okay, they get married. And But to, to live together, and you're going to put your the imprimatur, the blessing of your household over that reunion, it's crazy. I mean, don't do it, all right? Okay, this is Ashley who says, Pat, I'm in a competitive career and struggle with how I should behave as a Christian. Many find it okay to yell, curse, and only treat people with dignity if you need them because of the general understanding that it's just how you do business. I am conflicted about this. I don't want to appear weak, but I want to put my faith first. Do you have any advice? I certainly do. I've written a book, a whole book about successful families and finances. And one thing that the, 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 the leadership a great leader is a servant. What he tries to do is to serve his employer, employees, to make life good for them, to make opportunities, to give them benefits. And the whole idea of uh, cursing and abusing people is nuts. People do not respond that way. If you want to have successful employees, the best way to do is to praise them and help them and look, if they're not cutting it, fire them. I mean, you know, if, they, if, they, if they're unsuited for the job they've got, don't abuse them. Just say, look, I don't think it's working out. And thank you. And we, we ask you, God, to bless you. And we'll see you later. But the idea is once people are working for you, the whole idea is to be a servant. You as a leader are a servant. And that idea of cursing and abusing people is just absolutely nuts. It's counterproductive. You will not get production from people like that. You'll get failure and you'll get resentment and you'll get a lot of confusion. And you don't want that, okay? This is a viewer who says, my nephew is addicted to drugs, specifically heroin, and is smoking it regularly. He can no longer shoot up. He's always paranoid and thinking everyone is out to get him. When he's like this, he says that he's the only one fighting with God to get ready for the end times. He's in prayer often and will pray in tongues. My question is, if he's high and not in his right mind, is it possible that the speaking in tongues may not be the Holy Spirit, but demons instead? I want to be sure everyone is safe and not accepting this before knowing the truth. Well, I, I, I think... Look, you need an intervention for that, for that guy. You need to get people together. He needs to get set free from those drugs. And this is hallucination he's dealing with. And I, you know, I, I don't know where the source of those tongues comes from, so I can't tell you about that. And I don't think we can say. But I do think get people together and get him off the heroin, get him sober and cleaned up. Well, today's Power Minute is from 2 Peter. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through knowledge of Him who called us. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.